As far as I can recall, around the release of, like, I sort of guess, in 704, something's around 2007, there was an advert in the German subway. Can any any of you remember that? There was a yeah. commercial for it. It was on the, uh, yeah, oh God, that brings back memories. It was on the, um, uh, the, if I remember right, it was on the screens inside the subway. And there was also a, um, there was also a billboard put up in Silicon Valley as well. In fact, I, I saw a post saying that that billboard was still up, which surprised me because it had all the Ubuntu, all the original old Ubuntu branding. I don't know if that's actually the case, but we actually had, um, an event over in Silicon, Silicon Valley around that time and we all, a, bu- a bus full of canonical staff basically drove past it. This massive wo- whooping and hollering, <laughs> you know, when we drove past the sign. That's pretty awesome. It makes me, makes me think of Google. Do you know what ever happened with? Uh, they have something called Google too, not Google too, but Google too. Way back uh, yeah, in the th- days, do, do they still have that? As far as my yes, I mean they they they've deployed um, Ubuntu extensively in, internally in Google. I mean, yeah, Ubuntu is basically. It's basically Ubuntu with a bunch of tweaks for it to um, for it to work well with their internal networks and things like that. I've never actually seen it running. Um, I've been in Go- I've got some friends who work at Google, and I've never actually seen it. Because um, whenever I go to Google, all I seem to ever see is people running Macs. Um, but from what I can tell, that they're still running the you know the Ubuntu. I think a lot of the engineers. Do they use Mac OS X, or do they just use the hardware? Um, I've seen, I've seen, well, it depends on where you are. I mean, different departments. I mean, when I've worked with the marketing teams there, a lot of people are running Mac OS X on, on yeah, the Because, office. I mean, they, they obviously do work with Linux servers, and I suppose for SSH and X-Forward and things like that, it would, I probably, probably could do it on the Mac just as easily, but I, I know from some developers, they, they publish, even publish some blog posts about it, they keep insisting that if you do want to work with Linux servers, you might as well just use Linux on the yeah. desktop yeah. now. Uh, Most yeah. of the developers that I've seen there tend to run tend to run Linux, um, and I've usually seen them running Ubuntu. So, um, but uh, but I, I typically when I see, I actually see them at home on their own laptops. Actually, so I don't know I if that's good. Reasons I could think for why companies will not want the name. I mean, I, I wouldn't even think of a client of you know asking should I is is it possible for me to mention the name because this company that I deploy Ubuntu for, uh, and and the reason is well. There are actually several. One of them is to do with security. I think that's just something that companies have misconceptions about. They think if people know which version they use or whatever, they could actually uh, try to hack the servers or crack the servers or whatever. And the second thing is, uh, if they have lots of clients, they could alienate quite a few of them. I know some companies don't want to take sides in certain issues. They, they could take sides in an issue to do with their main business. For example, a uh, telecom company might want to say, well, we are against or for net neutrality or whatever, which also is quite di- divisive and controversial. But uh, the if, if they start to take sides with operating systems, they could actually alienate quite a bit of the, even if they go into politics and they start to, you know, fund political parties or wars, things like that, they could actually give reason for people to rebel against them. Uh, so, so I think this is one yeah. thing. I don't want to kind of carry a flag. We are the company that's using Linux. Uh, if you're an insurance company, for example, in this case, uh, I suppose it might offend some of the clients they have who or just hate Linux, whatever. Well, I, th- I, I, I don't, I don't think it's so much of whether customers care. I think for for most for most customers of any organization, they just don't care what 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 the companies. I mean, speaking personally, I mean, again, I. I'm always going to be a free software and Ubuntu person, but um, or certainly a Linux person. And who knows what the state of Linux is going to be in ten years? Um, but I imagine it's going. I, th- I think it's. I think it's going to. I think we. You know, I, I have no doubt that Linux will still be around and and and, and very successful. But um, you know, I don't. You know, I you know I have. I subscribe to various services. You know, various you know cable TV and whatever else, and I. Couldn't care less what their employees are using, as long as they can deliver my service. I mean, I think it would be great if they're running Ubuntu and Linux, just from an ideological perspective. But um, you know, I think the other thing is that it's important. Like I said, mentioned, I alluded to this earlier on. It's important for us to never forget that a company is 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 not just it's not like a person. A lot, I see this all the time. People talking about companies as if they're people, as if they have yeah, one yeah. single perspective. So and that's one one it's one person it's a kind of people. Uh, this actually has a lot to do with the conversation we had earlier. It's a point that's quite, quite important to make. Is uh, 
uh, when you have a governance or when you have a person who's said to have some rank within a community, uh, that person becomes a, a personification of the community as a whole. Um, yes. It leads to all sorts of issues, or it can be a solution to something. When you say companies are not people, I, I don't agree with you. Companies are. No, no. They're not a person, I, but they are. I didn't. I didn't say. I, I didn't say. I didn't say companies are not people. I said a company is not a single person. And what I mean by that is, I'll give you an example. Uh, Microsoft are a brilliant example of this. I see this all the time. People criticize Microsoft, and um, I think. People have every right to criticize Microsoft. I think they've made some dumb decisions, um, and I think the three of us would all agree with that. Um, and um, I don't support Microsoft. I don't support their growth. Um, um, but people talk about Microsoft as if everyone who works at Microsoft is the same person. Um, and from my, from my experience of, of, of from my experience of, of, of liaising with Microsoft in the past, I mean, I know people who work at Microsoft. Um, just speaking personally. The developers there, the people who hack code and, and are passionate about technology, they're just as cool as anyone who would work at Google or anyone who work at Canonical or anyone who work at Red Hat. Um, they're just developers who are fascinated by technology. The people, in my mind, who suck at Microsoft are the executive team. It's the Steve Ballmers of the world. And um, it kind of upsets me from time to time when I see people who just work at a company who are treated who are seen in the same light as people who work in a completely different part of the company. Um, and I have the same kind of view of people at Novell, like, you know, obviously, yeah, yeah. you know, like, like to me, the developers who, the developers who worked on, you know, who worked in the various Novell, like people like, you know, Nat Friedman, Joe Shaw, Miguel, Robert Love, when he was there. Yeah, to me, these, yeah. these people are, these you people are nice people. Yeah. I, I want to just clarify something. I think there is a bit of uh, innuendo here. Uh, I don't really know any person who goes, and mentions names of developers at Microsoft and says, oh, Windows is a terrible operating system. It's the, the fault of John Smith, who's a developer at Microsoft. I don't, I don't think people do that. I don't really know if you see that, then you just know. Uh, when it comes to Novell, and I think this is where you, you try to, uh, to, to, to insinuate that, that the person is targeting people instead of the company and the management, which manages the company, manages the developers. Uh, some of the people you mentioned, they are in fact managers. Uh, they are in fact driving projects which are beneficial towards a certain goal. Uh, and, you know, being a public figure or being a person who's managing a team, you, you, you should be open to some criticism from within your team and the outside as well. Uh, we oh, think- totally. I'm not, I'm not denying that for a second. What, but what I'm saying is, is that I see, and this doesn't just apply to Microsoft, it applies to every company. I see people uh, who have a perspective of a particular organization, and it's a single perspective, and they, it's kind of an assumption that the whole organization shares this perspective. Um, you know, we've seen this recently with Nokia, uh, the recent decision for them to start liaising with Microsoft in terms of Windows 7 or Windows phones, you know, um, to me is culturally an insane decision. Um, and I've seen people who work at Nokia um, treated now with a degree of suspicion because the executive management team at Nokia decided to um, uh, make this decision. And um, I don't know, I guess the point I'm, I'm making here is that um, these companies are so big and they often have many, many different perspectives inside them. Um, and many, you know, I've met people inside Microsoft who are cool te- tech people who just love technology but and they'd be just as cool. Of- yeah. Who's instructing them? I'm not, I'm not, I don't talk about the developers, you see, but this is a, a bit of a... A red herring in this case. I rarely talk about the developers at the bottom. Maybe some of them mention their names, uh, because of the, uh, because of the, uh, um, how should I put, I mean, I mentioned the one part of, you know, person who was hired by Canonical earlier, and I, I didn't mention the person by name intentionally. I mentioned the project's name, and I don't think that's too far to, to go to mention the project's name. To be, trying to, yeah. To be clear, to be clear, I'm not talking about you. Uh, I'm talking about, other people. Um, I know that you don't mention developers. I'm just saying that I'm not talking about whether people go and lambast this specific developer because uh, they work at a particular company. What I'm talking about is when somebody refers to Microsoft or Novell or Nokia or Canonical or Red Hat, the term, the name of that company can mean so many different things. Like if you, if we, and that's, that's, that's essentially what I'm saying is that, you know, some people will say, oh, well, that's typical of Red Hat or that's typical of Microsoft or that's typical of Canonical. And, and it's, a, it's a fair statement to make, and I'll explain why. 
necessary. Uh, I think, uh, uh, sorry I interrupt you on, on, on this issue, but uh, the companies work in a tyrannical way by definition. Uh, a person gives instructions to the person beneath. And that's just the way it works. If a 